Hi, I'm Ryan Hitchman. I'm a software engineer from SourceGraph. Um, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about some work that we did this year. So SourceGraph is a universal code search engine so that every developer and company can innovate faster and find their code. Uh, and most of our code is open source, including Zooked, which we use to provide regex code search for 2 million repositories. Um, and this year, uh, a large part of our work was scaling our sourcegraph.com uh, search engine from indexing 300,000 to 2 million repos. And a large part of that effort was reducing the RAM usage for Zooked, for the Zooked servers responsible for handling most of the code search uh, backend. So Zooked is a Go program initially created by Hanwen Nians uh, at Google that performs trigram-based regex search. Um, and that means that it builds an inverted index that has a map of every three-letter sequence of characters or trigram to its location in a repository. And then by iterating over the locations of each trigram, you can pretty efficiently implement uh, most regex searches. So initially, um, these are some graphs of our monitoring. The large purple area on the left is the RAM used by the different uh, Zooked replicas. So this is taking about 500 gigabytes of RAM. Um, and the tiny lines under it are all of the other jobs. So by far, the majority of our uh, you know, spend for cloud servers was on Zooked. Um, and then the drops are implementing these changes that I'm going to describe. Um, and it brought it down to about 150 gigabytes of RAM instead, which let us scale up a lot more. So Go has some really good profiling tools uh, with deep runtime integrations, and it makes it really easy to collect memory profiles to show you exactly what's occupying the heap. Um, there's lots of blog posts and good documentation about them if you look for it. So as a, as a first step for optimization, um, uh, I built a test corpus from all the files that one of the backend servers was indexing. Um, and then I collected a memory profile for that. So this shows precisely where it was using memory and uh, gave me the first indications of what needs to be looked at. So the corpus uh, represents 19,000 different repositories from GitHub mostly, uh, 2.6 billion lines of code and about 166 gigabytes of disk space. Um, so the mem this memory profile has 22 gigs of live objects on one server. Um, the total RAM usage your GoProgram uses does depend on other garbage collection things going on, but it's pretty decent and we do set a slightly more aggressive garbage collection threshold. Um, so in this case, we set a threshold of only using 50% more space than live objects instead of uh, twice as so much, which is a default. So digging into the code, um, uh, two thirds of the RAM usage is by this one function, which is building effectively a map from 64-bit to 64-bit uh, ints to 64-bit structs here. Um, and Go maps are very fast, but they have uh, quite a bit of overhead per entry, 40 bytes. And when the actual data we're storing here is only eight bytes, that's uh, or only 12, uh, 16 bytes, sorry, that's quite a large overhead. So it's worthwhile to implement a more com compact data structure for it. Um, there's many different kinds of dynamic maps you can implement, but all we really care about is being dense and static. Uh, so sorted arrays and binary search works really well. So as a first pass, just switching from a Go map to two slices got from 15 gigabytes to five gigabytes. Um, and this has logarithmic lookup speed instead of O of one, but it did not present any problems for our particular use case. Um, and there's a few more things we could do for our usages where uh, instead, of, <coughs> instead of an array of 64-bit in, uh, ints, we can do two arrays of 32, but uh, and, and there was another switch for, um, and that reduced it down to 3.5 gigabytes. And uh, yet a more complex one shifts ASCII trigrams because we're indexing Unicode and ASCII is much smaller. So that got it down to 2.3 gigabytes. So we've slashed this one data structure from 15 gigs to 2.3 with no real problems. And a lot of these could be generified now, but at the time generics were not available. So, as we shrink the uh, these largest one, the, the largest problem, other pieces start to dominate. Um, so a lot of pieces of metadata that were loaded from disk uh, into memory, we changed to be um, to be memory mapped uh, and accessed on demand. 
And some other things were left compressed until needed, uh, which shaved off another two gigs. Um, and I think the easiest takeaway here is if you have big static slices, uh, you are probably wasting memory because the excess capacity you have uh, that you're not adding to is just using memory. So if you simply copy them into a precisely sized slice, you can save a lot of memory. This was worth 500 megabytes um, of improvement here. So putting it all together, uh, the memory profile looks like this, which is a five times reduction overall, uh, which means that with the exact same resources, we can serve search queries for that many more repositories without requiring more servers. And it went from about uh, 1400 kilobytes of RAM per repository loaded to 310 kilobytes with no measurable latency changes, which is the really important thing. And I guess uh, in summary, memory is really expensive. Uh, we've had a few other talks already about how RAM is expensive and getting giant RAM servers is, is uh, costly. So have you profiled your applications? Um, you can find some really big wins with small changes if you look with the profile. Uh, Greenfield memory optimization is very satisfying and uh, it's a good distraction from all the other future work you're doing. So go out and optimize some code.